The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. morning church i hope you're having a blessed day today today we're going to do something a little different usually on sundays we go through our announcements and we take the offering and then we do the lesson but as the spirit of god is on me right now and my heart is just so moved in the presence of god about one specific truth that we're going to go ahead and do the lesson first we're going to do things in reverse order today We're going to go ahead and have the lesson and then we will go through the announcements and receive the offering at the end because I I am so tenderized in my heart right now as I have been worshiping and praying for over an hour and seeking the Lord and, and the Lord just keeps impressing upon me that there is somebody that is going to listen to me today that needs to hear the truth that God loves you, that God wants you so much and that as you turn back to him he runs after you he runs to you he meets you where you're at that today there's so many people in the world that think i have to go all the way back to god before he will receive me but the prodigal son just turned he started the journey the father saw him and ran to him my heart is so tenderized this morning i just i have to share this message this message changed my life nine years ago when i learned that the father loves me that he sent his son to die for me that he wanted me so very much and over a year ago now the lord moved in my life in a very radical way and delivered me and set me free from every piece of bondage over my heart and he and he did that in such a miraculous way and he used the parable of the prodigal son people ask me all the time how do you overcome hurt and this and that and i said it's it's luke chapter 15 it's the prodigal son it's it's what changed my life i share that sermon with so many people because I recorded it not a couple days after God set me fully free, liberated my heart to where I can walk as a free man now. And today, we're going to read all of Luke 15, not just the prodigal son. There's a parable that comes before the prodigal son, so we're going to read both. But I want you to know today that when you give your life to the Lord, all of heaven rejoices. When you turn to God, God runs to you. He meets you where you're at. You don't have to be perfect to come to God. 
You don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to set your mind to go after him and he will come after you. You just have to open your heart to him. And maybe, maybe you are already born again, but maybe you need God to set you free from some of the bondage that has just entangled your life. You know, maybe you still struggle with addictions, to pornography, to alcohol, to illicit drugs, to illicit sex, to, to depression, to anxiety, to fear, to hurt from a past marriage, to a family member passing away. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage. Maybe you're having a hard time with relationships with your friends, with people at work. I want to tell you today, God wants to set you free from all of it. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. The Spirit of God does not break chains. They destroy the yoke. They destroy chains. Those chains are not only just broken, they're destroyed. To where they can never be mended. They can never be put back on you again. When you get set free, you are set free forever. And it's such a powerful truth. So I want to pray. I want to, I want to start this out. If we're going to go in reverse order, let's just do it in reverse. I want to give you an invitation right now that if you're not born again, to give your heart to the Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And confess with your mouth He is Lord. Just say, Father, I repent today. I turn back to you. Forgive me of all of my sin. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Come into my life. In Jesus' name. It's as simple as that. I want to pray right now for every single person. Under the sound of my voice. For every bit of the bondage. All of the yoke. Everything that's been hindering your life. All of the pain in your heart. All of the setbacks and disappointments. I want to pray for you to be healed right now. The number one thing God has commissioned me to do is deliverance. So we are going to pray for deliverance right now over your life. And I want to tell you, when we finish praying, you will never have that again. Father, I thank you. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Right now, I destroy the yoke in Jesus' name. Every bit of sin that so easily entangles, all of the pain, all of the hurt. Father, I pray right now, healing over their life. I pray healing into their body. Be healed in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, all sickness, all pain be cast out and be gone. Right now, every bit of pain, every disappointment, all of the brokenness, be healed right now. All the anxiety, I cast you out. Fear be gone in Jesus' name. Right now, I pray the peace of God that surpasses all understanding come into your heart. I pray the love of God tenderizes you. All of the cows be broken off right now in Jesus' name. Father, touch these people. Holy Spirit, move in a mighty way. Transform them. Bless them. Be healed right now. Be set free. All of the chains to addiction. Be broken. Be destroyed in Jesus' name. Right now, I bind the devil from off of you and cast him out. Be gone in Jesus' name. Be set free. You are free in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Man, it's it's so powerful right now. I'm telling you, the, the presence of God has been on me the past couple weeks as we have been teaching through these chapters on end time prophecy and Luke chapter 15 is not specific when it comes to our series on end time prophecy but this is going to lay a foundation because Luke 15 is all about repentance turning back to the Lord and we're going to study this week in our daily teachings the prophet Hosea as we have just finished our series on Daniel we're going to get into the book of Hosea we're going to look at 1, 2, 3, and 14 of Hosea. We're going to look at four chapters out of the book. But before we actually get into all of that, I want to really talk about the Father's heart for His people and what repentance truly looks like and who the Father, what the Father thinks about it. So go with me to Luke chapter 15. We're going to pray and then we're going to read through all of 15. And then I just want to 
pastor you for a minute. This is not even going to be mostly a teaching lesson because I could teach through the prodigal son for hours. But I really want to just minister to you as a pastor on the heart of the Father. So Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. Father, let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your Son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion. Transforming us by the renewing of our mind. Conforming us to the image of Christ. Growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Luke chapter 15. Let's just read through the chapter and then we will go back through it and talk about it for just a little bit. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives it sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety and nine just persons which needeth no repentance." Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which, was, which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons. The, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers had bread enough to sp and in had bread enough and to spare, and I perished with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father say, saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it. And let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. But he was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering say unto his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. 
It was meet that we should be should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Now this chapter in Luke chapter 15 has got to be one of the most powerful chapters in the entire Bible. And as we talk about this today, this will impact and very greatly enhance the revelation that we will receive when we read through the book of Hosea. We've already taught through Hosea before, but we're going to take some time during this series of End Time Prophecy to really look at some important details of Hosea. But before then, I want to talk about this, these parables for just a second. Jesus gave two main parables. Jesus gave the parable of the 99. And I want you to see the heart of the Good Shepherd. That he says he will lead the 99 to go after the one. And a lot of times we have heard this parable before. But it's in the context of Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were looking at Jesus. Why do you eat with the sinners? And Jesus says, it's not the 99 that need not repentance. It's the one. It's the one that has gone away. He said, I seek after that one, the one that was lost, the one that I want to find, the one that I want to turn back to me. Then Jesus says, in the next piece, the woman seeking after the one piece which was lost. But when she finds it, when she hath found it, I want to tell you today, Jesus is coming after you. And the fact that you are listening to me today is the fact that the Spirit of God drew you and He has found you. I want you to turn your heart to the Lord today. You may say, Well, I, I have brokenness, I have sin, I have messed up. The prodigal son said the exact same thing. He said, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. That's the very first thing the prodigal son says. But then he says, I am no more worthy. It's the second thing he says. I sinned. I'm not worthy anymore to even be called your son. And then the prodigal son says, I will tell the Father to make me as one of thy hired servants. I want to tell you today, the prodigal son says three things. And when this revelation touched my heart, what I'm about to tell you, it changed everything. The revelation of who the Father is. The revelation of the fact that Jesus is a bridegroom. You say, what does that mean, a bridegroom? It means he has deep, intimate desire for a relational partnership with his people. It's not about servants. It's about partnership. It's about a family. It's about a bride. It's about somebody he wants to be with for eternity. Because when the father sees him, he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now the first part I want you to see, when it comes to the repentance of the son, going back to the Father, I want you to see the response of the Father. Because it's only through seeing what He does for us, His response to us, His heart for us, that we will ever grow in true intimacy with the Lord. It says the Father ran. Now this is very powerful because in, in this time period when Jesus was walking on the earth and teaching this parable, this was unheard of. The, the, the elder of the house does not run. I mean, there is no running. There, there's walking. And, and, and moreover, there's people walking to you. You don't go to them. They go to you because you're over the house. I mean, he's got an entire farm. He's got an entire land. He's got hired servants. I mean, this is a very wealthy man. And, and, the, and the wealthy don't run after anybody. More or less, they don't go to them. They come, people come to them. Yet the Father, all of the parables Jesus spoke, Jesus said, I speak these things in parables. A seeing they may see and not understand, and hearing they may hear and not, un or seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. I spoke them unto you in parables, 
but then it will be revealed. Jesus spoke it in parables while he was on the earth because he still had a plan that had to be fulfilled by God. He still had to go to the cross. Yet when the Spirit comes, he teaches you all things and reveals these things unto you so that way now we have understanding. That's why Jesus would speak a parable. Then he would explain it to his disciples. The, 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 the people didn't get the explanation, but the disciples did, and they wrote it down. So that after Jesus was gone, we could read through what he said and the understanding so that it would unveil his heart to us, even though he's not here physically with us. Jesus was the express image of the Father. He exemplified the Father in every way and in every facet and every part of his character and his nature and his being. And he says that when the father ran, which is profound to think about the father runs after you. The prodigal son just made up in his mind. He changed his thinking and started the journey back. He hadn't got back to the house yet. He had just started the journey and the father ran after him. That's how the father responds to you. The minute you change your thinking, boom, it's that quick. It's instant that the father comes to you. He meets you where you're at. I want to tell you today, you don't have to be perfect to come to the Lord. You don't have to have a PhD and a doctor in the word of God. You don't have to have everything figured out. You can come to him broken. The prodigal son was eating pig food. He was eating the food that the pigs ate. And he was starving. And he, and he went back. I mean, he not only was the lowest of the low because he was less than a servant. I mean, I mean, think about that. The hired servants had food, and yet he was even less than that. He was at the very bottom. And there's a lot of people that are listening to me right now that you feel like you're at the bottom. You don't feel like you deserve anything. You don't feel like you're worthy of it all. Well, I want to tell you today that God doesn't see it that way. God loves you. And he runs after you. But the thing I want you to see is when he runs back to the prodigal, he runs to him and meets him where he's at. The prodigal says, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. If you remember, just a minute ago, I said there's three things that the prodigal son had said in his heart that he was going to tell the father. He said, I sinned. I'm no more worthy. Make me a hired servant. Yet when he gets to his father, when his father runs to him, he says, I've sinned, I'm no more worthy, but then the father stops him. I never noticed that the first couple times I read this, this chapter in the Bible. But over, a little over a year ago, the Lord touched my heart and this revelation came to me. I, was, I, I, read, I heard another pastor preach on this and it moved my heart in such a great, in such a great measure, it set me free. I used to say all the time, I had sinned against heaven and my father. I, I was no longer worthy to be a part of the ministry. I mean, I had backslidden from God for five years. I mean, I, I, I had been a part of the ministry, but then I had been divorced. I had sinned against heaven. I wasn't worthy. I had done all kinds of iniquity for five years. I lived as the heathens do. I spoiled the inheritance that was given unto me by my father. And yet when I got to this place and I changed my thinking to go back to the Lord, I still saw myself as a servant. I said, I, I used to say it all the time. I would serve God with everything in me. I would give my life for it, but I would be a servant if that's what it took. I was just thankful that God didn't write me off. That I was actually still a part of the kingdom. And then God said, I never let you say, make me a servant. I told the, the prodigal said, I sinned and I'm not worthy. But he never said, make me a servant. The father cut him off. He stopped him from saying that. You say, well, why is that? 
It's because the Father doesn't want servants. He wants sons. He wants a family. He wants partnership because He loves you. And when you get restored, when you come back to God, you don't get a lesser place in the house. You get the same exact place of equality in the kingdom. I don't care how far you were today. I don't care how much sin you've done, how bad you think you are. The minute you turn back, God places the robe upon you, the ring on your finger. He anoints you. You become equal in the presence of God with all of the saints. You become equal with the 99. And all of heaven rejoices. There's so much more we could talk about. I have a lot more teaching on this parable of the prodigal. Dealing with the second son and, de and dealing with many, many more things. But I, I really just wanted to take this moment and give you a pastoral lesson on the heart of the father. Because the other heart of the father is to the other son. And just to tell you, he tells the other son, he says, you were in my kingdom. You had access to all of it. All of mine is yours. So here's something we know. This is what we know about the father. He leaves the 99 for the one. When he finds it, all of heaven rejoices. Because you are so valuable in the sight of Almighty God. Jesus loves you so very much. He gave his life for you. You mean that much to him. And he says, if you're far and you come back, you come back into the same exact position that every other believer is in. And I want to tell you, not just to those, but everybody that's in the house of God, you have access to everything of the fathers. Right now, you have access to all of it. You are not less than. We are equal in the presence of God, and God has given you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So I just want to give this invitation again, that if you're not born again, just pray with me right now. Father, I turn back to you. Forgive me of all of my sins. I have walked in straight away, but I'm coming back to you. Receive me. Receive me today. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Be Lord of my life. I turn back to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you're now born again. And I want you to reach out to us because I want to get you some next steps because God loves you so very much. We're going to finish here for today. This lesson is going to lead us into everything we're going to talk about this coming week out of the prophet Hosea. But I really pray for you that you just receive everything that God's doing because God loves you so very much. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take just a minute and then we're going to jump right into the announcements. We're going to have announcements at the very end. We'll receive the offering. And then we will be finished for today. So, Father, I thank you for all the people. I bless them in Jesus' name. Church, I love you. God bless you. And have a great day. And we're back. And, church, I just want to say that I love you. And I'm so thankful to have you with us today. I know we just doing things a little bit different today. I'm doing things a little bit, you know, a little out of order. Uh, meaning we're doing stuff kind of flip-flop today. But... The presence of God has just been so heavy on me this morning that I wanted to, I wanted really to just express the heart of the Father to you from the very beginning. And, and, and I, want, I wanted to see people born again because God loves you so very much. But what I want to do is I just want to go through our announcements and then we'll receive the offering and we'll be done for today. So a couple of quick announcements. One, our daily teachings are continuing. And of course, that's every Monday through Saturday at 9 a.m. Because we are making this transition and we are, by the time this is live, we are in Brazil. And I am so thankful to the Lord that we are ministering the gospel all across the world. But God is doing so much powerful things through this ministry as we continue to study end time prophecy. And as we talk today about Luke chapter 15, we are going to spend the entire week talking about the prophet Hosea. Now, we went through like 20-something parts on Hosea last year, and we're going to go into Hosea again 
We're not going to read all 14 chapters, but we're just going to take out some pieces out of Hosea and really talk about the Father's heart. Because if there is one message that you see through the book of Hosea, it's that in the heart of God, it is for reconciliation and restoration in a people that will repent and turn back to God. That's God's heart. And so I want to take some time to go through Hosea, especially after a powerful lesson dealing with repentance out of Luke 15. So please make sure you're following us every day, Monday through Saturday at 9 a.m. I want to continue to encourage you to follow our discipleship curriculums as we are entering into quarter number four. We're going to be going through, we're going to finish our BSM discipleship curriculum, the second half, but then we're entering back into our divine purpose curriculum. And for the very first time, we're going to be teaching our end times curriculum part two which is a verse-by-verse -verse systematic through the entire book of the Revelation. So I encourage you to go online to blankslateministries.org slash store. And when you buy a curriculum, it auto-enrolls you in the class and then follow along with us because the Lord wants to do some amazing things in your life. So follow our daily teachings, take our discipleship classes. And I want to give this piece of encouragement that there are so many people that get caught up in life but don't be so caught up in life that you put the lord aside don't don't let god not be first place in your life i hear it so often i would ask people are you following along with us are you doing the work and people will say well i just got caught up well don't let the devil steal it from you most of the things that i counsel people on if they would have just continued to follow along they would have received the truth they needed before they encountered the trouble that caused them to draw back that's why jesus always gives you it in advance that's why we teach by the spirit of god because there are truths that i will deliver that if you will follow along every single day and if you'll do the work in the classes God will equip you with the truth before the trouble so that you can overcome when it happens. It's not if it happens, it's when it happens. And it's the truth that will change your life and allow you to overcome. So I continue just to encourage you to follow along with us. And today I just want to read one verse and then I want to receive the offering and we will actually finish today. But the verse I want to read is in Hebrews chapter 4. So go to Hebrews chapter 4. It says, For he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Now, that is such a powerful verse. But a lot of people misunderstand what it means when it means enter into rest by ceasing from your own works. So here's what this means. This word ceased is very important. It's the same word used in Acts chapter 14 where Paul restrained the people at Lystra. Well, what had happened was Paul and Barnabas had got to Lystra, prayed for a man, he got healed. And then the people called Paul and Barnabas gods and they tried to give a sacrifice and an offering unto Paul and Barnabas. And they said, keep it. We don't want it. And Paul restrained the people from doing it. The reason why he restrained them is there is no more sacrifice needed to earn the things from God. Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the word. It was God's offering. And when Jesus said it is finished, he's saying the atonement for sin, the grace of God and the faith of God coming into your life and you having now access to the father being in the kingdom of God, just like we talked about in the prodigal son, that you have access to all of the Father's kingdom. Jesus said, it's finished. I finished the plan of God and made that access available to you today. There's no more work needed. That's why Paul restrained him. So when we take the offering today, here's what I want you to understand. There is no thing you can do, not one thing, when it comes to giving that will move God in your life when it comes to your finances when it comes to your healing when it comes to your deliverance when it comes to your salvation there is nothing you can do that can force god's hand or move god because god says it's already done so i don't give to try to get god to give me because god said i already gave it i give because god already gave it that's rest 
I don't give because I'm trying to make God move in my life. I'm giving because God has already moved in my life. And I'm so thankful for that. I respond to him with an overflow out of the abundance of thankfulness for what God has already done in my life. That's why I give. So I just encourage you today to enter into this rest. I encourage you to partner with this ministry and give in abundance. We partner with ministries that advance the gospel. We give in abundance also. And I encourage you to do that today. Give. Give as much as you can. Give in abundance. Partner with us as we're on the mission field, advancing the kingdom of God across the world. I'm not telling you today because I need it. Listen, God will supply all of my need. I don't tell you because of that. Paul said, not because I desire a gift. I desire fruit that abounds to your account. I'm not telling you to give because of me. I'm telling you to give because of you. And give because you trust God. Give out of an abundance. Give out of an overflow. And realize you're not moving God. You're moving you. You're moving yourself in alignment with God. And when you do that, you will see the abundance of God come in your life as you receive from Him. And I want to tell you in advance, thank you for giving. Thank you for partnering with us. And thank you for all the people that have been partnering and have been supporting this ministry as we advance the gospel to the whole world. We have curriculums in eight states. We're touching multiple continents and multiple countries with the gospel of Jesus. And we're going to continue to do this as you partner with us and help us in advancing it farther forward. So we're going to go ahead and receive the offering. And once the offering is received, you are already dismissed for today. But I'm going to pray for it. We're going to receive it. And then I pray that you have a great week and that you continue to follow us every single day. So Father, I thank you for everybody that is giving. Everybody under the sound of my voice that is helping us as, and partnering with us as we advance the gospel to the world. Father, bless these people in Jesus' name. Father, let the enemy be rebuked according to your word. The windows of heaven be opened. Let them receive a hundredfold in Jesus' name, measured back unto them. And Father, let their hearts be tenderized that they don't give to try to earn, but they give because you have already given to us as a response to you in thankfulness. And Father, we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. I'm going to give you just a minute to give your offering, and you are dismissed for today. So have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow.
So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good care of me. And you know what I need before I even ask a thing. And you hold me in your hand with the kindness that never ends. I'm carried. to be more but i can't get past your good